and welcome to Fanatics Fish Story Time, episode number 15. Today we're going to read a book called Some Bugs, and we're going to have a discussion about suckermouth fishes, and we're going to do a cute song you probably all recognize that has a little spider crawling up a spout. So sit back and relax, and get ready for another fun story time at Fanatics Fish Story Time. Hi fish friends! We are doing a book on some bugs. And that's exactly what this book is called because this little gal has been super excited about grasshopper hunting, praying mantis finding, ladybug finding, roly polies, all things bugs and insects. So she really wanted us to read a book about bugs. So here we are. Some bugs. And the words are by Angela Dieter Lizzie. And the bugs are by Brendan Wenzel. So it's some bugs. Some bugs. What do you see here? There's Kitty. The ladybug. And look over here. What do we find? All things that you need for your bug. Finding and catching and exploring, right? You've got the magnifying glass, the bug net, and a jar or a container that they can breathe out of. Some, some bugs stink. Some bugs bite. Some bugs stink. Woo! Look, see the scorpion there? And a mosquito. And a stink bug. And a ladybug. bugs fight. They're fighting. Some bugs flutter. Some bugs crawl. Look at that. There's a monarch butterfly. Right there. And that's a monarch caterpillar. Some bugs curl up in a ball. Like they're really bullies. Some bugs hop, some bugs glide, some bugs swim. Look at that one. Shoo. It's a grasshopper. Mm, that's right. And some bugs hide. Green <gasps> mantis. Green mantis. And look who's this. It's a birdie. Birdie, birdie, birdie. Yeah. Tweet, tweet. That's right. Look at all these bugs. Do you see the moths? <laughs> My green oh, mantis. Is that a Katie bin? the food that you leave out 
the yard, you'll, you're bound to find some ants, right? Little chipmunks and butterflies and bees. Jumping things. And grasshoppers that and jump on I love it. this page because it says, what's that bug? And it goes through all of the lovely bugs. Even a dog tick. Ooh, I don't love those. Oh, ma'am. Look, there's a little silk ant. And a lover grasshopper. And a walking stick. It goes through all of the fun bugs. And if you get this kind of a book, you can go through all the fun bugs too and see what you might be able to find. They've got a monarch and a horsefly. Yeah, there's all kinds. A dog flea, a yellow jacket, a hummingbird moth, a wheel bug, a praying mantis. American bumblebee, a two-spotted ladybug, a marble orb weaver, a scarlet and green leafhopper, mm -hmm. there's a green stinking bug, all kinds of bugs. There's a bull weevil and a pink aphid, mm -hmm. a lunate, a zale moth, so many, and then a white fly. And a pill bug. We call those roly polies at our house, don't we? Yeah, we like those, don't we? And look, there's Kitty taking a look at all those bugs. Right, and a Hercules beetle. So many, so many bugs out in nature, my friends. And look, this is where the bug book ends. With ladybug going up to your spout. Ladybug's going bye bye. The, oh, going up the, the spout, huh? The water spell from the Itty Bitty Spider song. Yeah, that's so fun, isn't it? Awesome. That makes, that's a great idea to do the Itty Bitty Spider song. Let's do that. Shall we do that song? Okay. Hi, fish friends. We're here with a song, Itty Bitty Spider, today. Are you ready to do that, Norma? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Do you remember the, how to do it with your hands? So it goes, Itty Bitty Spider. And now it's time for Fish Facts. Today we're going to talk all about sucker mouth fishes. A common name for those is a pleco, or a more fancy name is a plecostomus. When they say plecostomus, that refers to a catfish that has an armored head and a big suckered mouth. Lots and lots and lots of different types of plecos on the market uh, and in the world. The most common plecos get really big, and some of them even eat some algae. But many plecos don't eat algae, or they eat algae some of the time, and some plecos eat nothing but worms or other type of meaty foods. Some plecos are big and brown and black, and some have funny face wear, like these bushy-nosed plecos. All plecos have a big suckery mouth on them. You can see this guy's big sucker. It is not true that they're all ugly. Some of them are quite pretty. This little fella is a long fin bushy nose. And he's been bred for those pretty fins. Some have spots, some have stripes. Some of them have spots and stripes. Plecos come in all sizes. Some of them are very big, even two feet or even bigger, which is almost as big as you are. 
Some of them are very tiny, as small as two inches or even a few of them a little bit less. Two inches is about the size of your finger. Well, there are catfishes that come from almost all over the world in cold waters or warm waters. Plecos only come from South America. If you have a pleco, you may have noticed that they normally only come out at night, and that's because they're what they call nocturnal or do most of their stuff at night. This picture shows how the pupils on a plecostomus uh, change shape from night to day. The funny little half crescent circle is called an omega iris, which is the fancy way that plecos block out extra light so that they can see well at night and not be blind during the day. There are nearly 700 different types of plecos in the wild. New ones are showing up every day and it makes it very confusing to figure out who's who. That's why people in the pet industry came up with an idea some years ago called an L number system. So if you ever hear somebody talking about their L numbered pleco, you'll know that's just a fancy way of saying, hey, this is which one I've got. The L numbers got out ahead of scientific names, which is how we normally tell the difference between one striped pleco and another. Uh, and at this time, even biologists will use the L numbers to help keep track of who's who. See how this little fella's got himself all jammed up inside his favorite cave? Plecos are known for jamming themselves into places and hiding during the day. That's actually how many species go about having their babies. They'll shove themselves up into a deep cave like that and lay their eggs, and then they'll take care of them and protect the eggs and the young hatchlings from predators. Oftentimes, we think of Plecostomus as algae-eating fish, and that is true for some species, but as we've talked about, there are so many different types, there's many different things that the guys actually eat. So when you're considering uh, Plecostomus for your fish tank, you should always ask the question, what does he actually eat? Don't just assume, because he has a sucker on his mouth, that he'll eat algae. Another very important thing to consider when looking at getting a Plecostomus for your fish tank is how big will they get, because size does matter. You may have heard people say things like a fish will only grow to the size of his tank, but that's not actually really true. You want to make sure you get fish that will stay inside the size of your actual tank. Some Plecostomus will get huge, truly huge, even up to two feet while many stay quite small or an in-between size. So along with what do they eat, how big do they get, is another question that's very important to ask when considering a new fish for your tank. Plecostomus like to have a great place to hide, so they'll want to have a favorite log or a rock or a cave to get into to feel like it's their very own spot. Along with a good hide, I always recommend having natural wood in a fish tank with a pleco on it. The reason why is that wood grows a whole lot of what we call biofilm, or the slimy stuff that grows inside the tank. And those plecos actually eat quite a bit of that. They'll eat on that all night long, even between feedings. Plecostomus have a very fast metabolism in general, and you do not want them to get hungry. One other thing to consider when talking about Plecostomus, it's a good time to talk about how we never let our pets loose in the wild. In some places in the world, people have let their Plecostomuses go in rivers and ponds and lakes, uh, and they've ended up causing real problems if they're in places that they, they just don't belong. Uh, it's a good rule of thumb that you never ever let your pets loose in the wild on purpose. The reason this will come up when we talk about Plecostomus is because some of the more common types of Plecostomus get very large, much bigger than any fish tank can handle. And when they're bought inexpensively, when they're babies, uh, they seem like a lot of fun until they get too big for the tank. And not knowing what to do with them and having a hard time finding somebody that has a place for a gigantic fish like that, sometimes people think, well, I'll just let them loose in the river and it should be just fine. But it is not just fine. In places where they'll actually survive, they're not supposed to be there and they can take up room where other fish should be and they can do damage to dikes and overall it's just not okay. Be very careful only buy fish that you can handle for your aquarium to start with and then make sure that you keep them for their entire life. With proper care and feeding, plecos can live for a really long time, sometimes decades, 10, 20, 30 years or even more. 
They're one of my absolute favorite groups of fish in the whole world, and you guys all know how many favorites I have, but really, I love these kind of fish. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining me for story time today, and I hope you enjoyed our fish facts all about plecos as near and dear to my heart. We'll catch you guys next week for another installment of Fanatics Fish Story Time. Bye for now.